joining us at our podium today. We really appreciate your presence here. Yeah. Let me just bask and bathe in it for a second. Mm -hmm. Your podium is square, ours is round, mm -hmm. but I'm getting used to it. Be jealous, Internet. Be jealous. I'm this close. On the show today, put on some overalls and grab your yoga mats because we're off to a yoga farm. Yeah. And around the net, you're going to meet Yogi Okie Doki, who wakes up at the crack of dawn to harvest questionable exercises for children. Yeah. Plus, film expert Chris Gore will school us in all things Judd Apatow in today's movie lore. We're going to find out how he went from rooming with Adam Sandler to making freaks and geeks. There's a leap. That, that totally makes sense. And we're going to be talking about EA's brutal legend. Will this Jack Black yeah. beat him up wrong? Or is it merely music? Oh. I have the answers for you. And then we will discuss Microsoft making sweet, sweet love to Yahoo with a new ad deal. I know, sexy, right? Find out how Google feels about their new relationship in The Loop. But it's time now to run down the top five things on the web. We're going around the net. Morgan, you're a, you're a fan of the exercise, right? I exercise. You dabble from time to time? Once in a while. See, I, I think you know that you're exercising correctly when it starts to hurt. You the burn. Yeah, a little a burn, little just bit. a little bit. Totally. You don't want to be suffering all the time, but, right. you know, you want to put some work into it. Agreed. Agreed. You know you've overdone it when this happens. He taping himself exercising. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't make sense to me. The only appropriate time to tape yourself uh, exercising is like naked Nordic tract. That's the only time. Is when you got a full stride going, then you put the webcam. Will somebody tell me why I agreed to come on this show? I don't. Because uh, now I have an image. Yeah, and you're welcome. Yeah, um, no, no, thank you. Th yeah, I'm gonna treasure that's that. That's a for parting a long gift time. for you. Yeah, I don't know why he's filming because it's not like he was doing like a, a incredibly like hulkish routine. No, no, it was he was like he was like kidding. Fisher Price weights. Yeah. And really getting in on it. And why would that small weight? Cause that wire to snap. I mean, those things are, are, you know, they're tested to get the whole stack. That was from Break, right? That was a Break video, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah I, I, you have to ask us, would you take a 20 pound weight to the nose or a bar that's attached to a 20 pound weight right. for 400 bucks? I would. So, yeah, I think that's. Uh, I don't, you would? I totally, yeah. I think we might start taking up a collection. All right, let's do it. And you get a bow flex out here, and I will do ungodly things with it. You don't even know. That is a challenge, my I know friend. exactly how those bars bend. All right, today's number four video is courtesy of ABC Action News 13 in Toledo. They were on the scene when mayoral candidate Ben Knopp was heckled <laughs> this past weekend. And, and the merciless heckling, it didn't make it to air for some reason. No, but, that's too bad. But the cameraman <laughs> who was shooting this thing has a blog, and thankfully this magic will now live on forever. We're here today in Parkwood Avenue for uh, the, the, the street that my uh, mother actually grew up on down the street. Um, hey, make sure you guys get that camera right there. Yeah. Are you done? No, I'm going to Okay. All right. Let me get, speak my piece and maybe they'll come interview you afterwards and you can present your argument, okay? That's fair. All right. Take four. <laughs> Faulty. Okay, we're here on Parkwood for a very serious issue. Regardless. I love, I love that he wouldn't even get up from his porch to no, he's like, He was not interested in nope, moving. Just, I can boo right from here. That's it. This was, he doesn't have television, maybe. This is only entertainment today. But who planned the location of his little press conference? Like, in front of this Of all the house. porches in this town, go to another one. But. And that's the problem with the recession, is that yeah. it's only increasing the number of drunks that heckle from their porch. Kevin, it is the only work they can find, and I think it's very cruel of you to all try right. to take that away from them. That is true. That is true. I'm sorry. I... Boo! All right, 
Okay. Okay. Are you done yet? No. No. I mean, we have an hour, right? <laughs> yeah, we do. You, you just heckle through the whole thing. When I do the loop, I hope you pop up in the back with a giant red stripe and just chug it and boo. This is gonna be fun. Yahoo, boo. <laughs> um, I've been told. I don't know. I don't know myself, but I've been told that puberty can be a confusing time. Um, stuff is growing all over the place, and and you want to share the things that you're growing with your good friends. And... Yeah, you are growing a little bit of peach fuzz, Thank actually. You. Thank you. Yeah. Twenty-six years. Going strong. I, I noticed. Thank you. You know, every girl actually, she does worry that her first kiss is going to be all right and what it's going to be like. Really? They do. It's something we're concerned about. But if you think your coming of age is, is going to be difficult in this country, you should take a look at how traumatizing adolescence is in Japan, courtesy of the entertaining and educational anime, Ko Monozuke. I, I, I have to say that I did not see that coming. Yeah, I, I'm glad it did, though. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Does that bring you back? Does that I bring mean, back memories of your first uh, kiss or no? That's great. Behind the drama department. No, I, I just think <laughs> it starts was it, out. Wait, was your first kiss really behind the drama department? No. no. Okay, um, just making sure. I like how it starts out disturbing. So you're like, okay, the disturbing part is the weird tongue thing. Like, okay, I've yeah. seen that. Yeah, it's gross, but whatever. I've seen that before. And then it just takes a dive off the cliff. Yeah, then it turns into like two bench kissers, one monster. Yeah. Like, uh, what? That is another fetish in Japan that yeah. we just. Thanks, Japan. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. All right, today's number two item is a recut of the children's show EI EI Yoga, starring Yogi Okie Doki, as presented by Everything is Terrible. I know oh, it's a mouthful. Shoot me in the throat. <laughs> if you, like, sometimes cutting up a TV show like this can make it even more confusing and hard to follow. But we get the feeling that this show already had that problem before it was edited. Hi, I'm Yogi Okie Doki, and this is my farm. Yogi Okie Doki is my name. The healthy mind and body is my game. I live out on the farm, do yoga in a barn. I'm looser than a goose out in the rain. Don't forget to breathe, little yogis. Ah! Are you breathing, Christian? See, there is a chicken scratching in the dirt. Beautiful. wrong with that video yeah but that guy's strong very strong yogi okie dokie yogi, 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 is he's, quite he's pretty ripped for a, a, for a silver guy. fox yeah <laughs> of course he also does look like he weighs about four ounces so he doesn't need a whole lot of muscle mass True. to hold yeah, himself it's all up. strained juices and stuff through yeah his jack <laughs> lane i'm sure you, you can do that stuff right i had a I, my uncle used to teach yoga like that at the park with kids until the court told me he wasn't allowed to teach it at ones with playgrounds it's sort of sad actually yeah I don't know what the courts have against fitness. <laughs> All right, if you find yourself on the uh, yoga farm, you should probably skip the hay ride, though, I'm guessing. Yeah, because there's probably a dude named Hay, and while the term ride is technically accurate, it's not how you want to spend your afternoon. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned, everybody. we got a quiz show around the net style. The translation of that is someone gets an answer very, very wrong. <laughs> you should see it next. Who could it be? agree with me. I think yeah. kids just say the darndest, uh -huh. most racist things. Uh -huh. yep. yeah. This is from an 80s children's quiz show from New Zealand called W3, a sort of beloved media icon who also happened to have a name that sounds like it was pulled out of World of Warcraft, which I love. Selwyn Too Good. Yes! Good. I delivered 12 wolf paws to him, actually. Exactly. Yeah. And then he sent me across the world to get 14 ruby eyes. Right. And then I, I logged out and said, nerds, how can you play this? <laughs> Present company excluded. But very few quiz show moments can jam an entire dramatic arc into like a 14 second exchange, and this is the exception. When we refer to someone as yellow, we consider them to be what? Chinese? Not Chinese. Over to Jerry and Murray. No. Yes, Jerry. Um, cowardly. Cowardly is correct.
playing a violin and the piano and crying while he gave the right answer. That would have been a little, a little more on par. It's a little, that a little Australian kid is never going to live that down for the rest no, of his life. No, and I would not want to be that kid's parents after that taping. No. That would be the worst. Not that I want to be anybody's parent, but... Wait, okay, but you've had your share of awful quiz show moments. I think we need to be honest about this. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about, Morgan. I don't know. Quiz time? Quiz, quiz time? I've uh -huh, never heard yeah. of it. Is that maybe I should DVR it or something? Yeah, I just we never... actually taped an appearance this morning. Drawing a blank here. Uh -huh. don't, know, don't know what I did this well, morning, but it certainly wasn't. Just, uh, roll quiz tape. Okay. We now join quiz time, already in progress. And we are down to our final round. First question. In 2009, Forbes magazine named this city the worst place to live. Oh, uh, uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia. <laughs> no, no, Kevin. Morgan. That would be Stockton, California. <sighs> Absolutely correct. <laughs> Come yeah. on. No, Halifax is horrible. Everybody knows it's Stockton. We've been trying to kick it out of the state forever. Yeah, but <laughs> Halifax is bad. Okay, moving on to our second question. This large terrestrial animal with a voracious appetite also has poison glands and is treated as a pest by many farmers. Oh, I got it, I got it! A Nova Scotian! <laughs> what? No, Kevin, no. What is, what is a Nova Scotian? A More. cane toad. Very good! Thank Thank you, come on, you. man! What? You've never heard of the cane toad? No, I'm just, you obviously haven't been around many Nova Scotians. No, we would have also accepted giant Nemo tropical toad or marine toad. I would have also accepted a Nova Scotian. Mm. No, no, I'm saying all they do is eat, meat, meat, and then they spit poison at you through their eyes. Well, well then, okay. moving on. Check to the wiki. Let's go. Final question, Chuck. Third question, final question. <clears throat> This land, home of the powerful necromancer Sauron, mm. is described as a dying land not yet dead, infested with maggots and flies, marked with a red eye-shaped block. Ah! Kevin? Nova Scotia, for the win! No, oh, no, no, sorry. Okay, should, all right, it's totally all Nova right, Scotia. hosers, okay, no, no, hold it's on totally a minute. I shut this program down on behalf of the Canadian Anti-Defamation League. <laughs> what are you talking These hosers have said enough bunk about Canada, eh? eh? Wait, no, no, it's a, Nova Scotia's a dump. Morgan, stop taking a bullet. Hey, all you right, will never say that's me. Morgan, well, listen, help. Listen, you audience at home, Canada's a fine country, eh? Come up for our healthy exchange rate. Then stick around for a game of hockey. Snack on some poutine. Sit on a Chesterfield. Drink a 2-4 or some maple syrup. And learn the metric system, eh? Action! Chris Gore here to tell you what you didn't know about your favorite filmmakers and their work. It's time for Movie Lore. I'm pregnant. With a baby? Yes. Then what are you hitting on me for? Today we're looking at Judd Apatow, the funny man director who has revolutionized things these last few years by proving R-rated comedies can be both funny and successful. I enjoy your movies. And I enjoy all of your movies. Which movies? The ones where you try to kill Bruce Willis. With his new film, Funny People, Apatow tackles the world of stand-up comics. It isn't too far a stretch for the filmmaker who got his start washing dishes working with his mom at a comedy club. He used his access at the club to interview the likes of Howard Stern and Jerry Seinfeld for his high school's radio station. You're hiding some Judaism. I don't think I can hide that. My face is circumcised. Apatow moved to Hollywood at age 17 with big dreams of becoming a stand-up comic like his idol Steve Martin. After a few years as a struggling comic, he learned he could make a better living writing jokes for others. You shouldn't have lost all that weight, man. There's nothing funny about a physically fit man. I know, it's lame, right? Yeah, no one wants to watch Lance Armstrong do comedy. <sighs> It was also during this time that Judd would share a home with a young Adam Sandler. The first few minutes of Funny People were actually shot by Apatow nearly 20 years ago, when he and Sandler amused their friends with prank phone calls. Hi, I have no legs. May I speak to the manager? After producing the Ben Stiller show, Apatow would go on to write for The Larry Sanders Show. Years later, it was the relationship he formed with star Gary Shandling that inspired Funny People about an established comic working with a funny yet unknown rising star. Ira, look how cute these girls are. Yeah, they look the same from back here. <laughs> with a growing cult following, Apatow became even more of an indie darling in 1999 with the short-lived TV series 
freaks and geeks. The show launched the careers of Seth Rogen and James Franco, who would reunite later in the Apatow-produced comedy, Pineapple Express. I'm gonna save you, man. Yeah, yeah. What's next for Judd Apatow? He has yet to confirm his next project after Funny People, but one option is the Jonah Hill comedy Pure Imagination, about a guy whose girlfriend may be imaginary. He's also developing a Sherlock Holmes comedy starring Sasha Baron Cohen as the great detective and Will Ferrell as his sidekick Watson. I'm Chris Gore, and that's it for Movie Lord. Yeah, uh, little known facts, yeah. if, I, if I may. Chris Gore yes. is actually the guy that Knocked Up was based on. Really? Most people don't know that. Really? No. No, he was the inspiration for 1946's The Three Stooges Meet Frankenstein and Chris Gore, though. I love that uh, movie. Yeah, definitely. Fantastic. You should really Netflix it. Yeah. Instant right. cue that. I actually hope everyone here is suitably ready to rock because Kevin and I are about to talk Brutal Legend. Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, uh, thanks for the applause. Can we get a guitar sting or something for that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah! All right. We, uh, we demoed this game back at E3, but um, you had the... Uh, well, just remind our viewers how awesome it is, first of all. Okay. And then let's get into it. This game is basically... It's about metal, which we all like. We're mm -hmm. big metal fans. Um, it's definitely... It's an action brawler, um, and you are a roadie who is played by Jack Black, and you get transported into the land of awesome, which is filled with hot rods and metal gods and demons and hot chicks, and Lita Ford, um, who... Some guys tell me they like, they have a little crush on. Uh, that's okay. It's yeah. okay to have a crush and on Lita Jack Ford. Black, and I think this is something that's really going to get at the attention of the mainstream media. Right, is, yeah. He's is... voicing the main character and, of course, obviously right. doing virals and other little things to help he's, forward the he's attention. He's putting of the game. a lot of work into it. Yeah. The comedy, he's very paying a lot of attention to the timing. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a huge game no matter what. Well, we got Jack Black in game and doing promos, but we also have Tim right. Schaefer behind the wheel of this entire project. And for those who don't know, he's the man who brought a Psychonauts right. and a, a metric ton of other amazing games as well. Um, can we expect the same type of humor and innovative gameplay, or...? I think that we're actually going to see a little bit more mainstream humor than we saw in Psychonauts. In Psychonauts, for example, we were busy collecting mental baggage. Yeah, and amongst was... 40 other things that you had to collect in the game. Okay, fine. But... I know you weren't, like, the greatest fan of Psychonauts, but you have to admit that it was weird and crazy. Brilliant, brilliantly designed and, and a, just a bizarre, fun world, yes. And there was a meat circus level, which, I mean, <laughs> yes. you can't really go wrong with a meat no. circus level. Um, but he's a very creative guy. He's a very driven guy. He loves making games. So you see that passion uh, coming out of Brutal Legend. Yeah. And, and it seems like EA is obviously trying to build a lot of hype for this game, to say the least. Um, this game is a hype machine, and that's sort of actually what I wanted to talk a little bit about today, is the fact that there are viral videos that are going around. Jack Black has done a lot of these viral videos on the net, mm -hmm. which have been spreading like wildfire, and he's been pushing towards this game really hard, which I think has been helping the game a lot, Jelly too. Bean, the world's first guitar! Oh, yeah, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> he's... <laughs> I think, I think awesome. he might be taking off of your keyboard cat a little bit. Well, that's okay. I like <laughs> Jelly Bean looks like she can shred. He or she can shred. Um, yeah. I know Comic-Con is sort of like, it's now the event for people that are promoting movies and TVs and everything else. It's gotten um, incredibly massive. Well, yeah, to say the least. Like, shockingly so. But Brutal Legend had quite a presence there as well. Brutal Legend got guar. Yeah. They got guar. And I know like quite a number of people who were in here right now went to this guar concert and emerged yeah. sticky and covered with plenty of unmentionables. Yeah, I asked everybody, like, how was the party? How was the event? How was the game? And they're like, dude, I was covered in fake urine and blood. It was sweet. And I'm like, okay, that, that tells me nothing yeah. about the game or the music, but awesome. I'm glad you awesome. had a good time. Personally, not super into getting sprayed at concerts, but no? apparently some people wow. uh, definitely were. And I think this was something huge for them. This was covered all over the internet. Everybody was super yeah. excited about the Guar show. Guar music not necessarily actually in the game. But stylistically, spiritually... Guar's presence. Guar's presence can be understood. As, as the blood of your enemies gushes all over you and your character. That's excellent. We that's should, when you'll feel Guar's we presence. We should let them use that. I do want to actually... Yeah, but they haven't actually released the final track list, so we can't say that it's definitely sure. not, but I would be a little surprised. It'd be odd. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. And here's a photo of the game's designer, by the way, Tim Schafer and uh, Abby from X-Play. Yeah. This was uh, on Kotaku today. Yeah, that, um, that was up. It's um, They were headbanging in the mosh pit, apparently. See, the... You know, Tim Schafer actually decided that he was going to make this game because he had such a love of rock, and he really mm -hmm. always wanted to meet Lemmy from Motorhead and Lita Ford and all these people whose names I um, just kind of learned. Um, but <laughs> I'm metal. But well, now, now let, me, that, let me ask you that, because yeah. if you're not metal um, and, and you don't have a, a deep-seated knowledge of that or the, or the characters that some of these uh, guys are based off of your enemies and whatnot, will it still appeal to you? Like, is the humor mainstream and mass enough to where it's still going to be a fun, funny game? I think that the humor is pretty mainstream. Everybody likes guitar. Everyone likes air guitar. Everyone likes chopping things with battle axes. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes hot rods. And it's Jack Black's humor and timing and comedy. And I actually, you know, I saw probably the 
first 35, 45 minutes of the game, and I laughed the entire time, and I learned I don't know anything about metal. Well, that's good. So that's, go. That bodes well, then. And uh, we know it I has mean, multiplayer. I mean, I'm metal, and I rock. Woo! Bring back that guitar string. Bring that back. I don't know if we, there it is. Yay! Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I get the... Thanks for sharing your gaming knowledge with us, Morgan. You're Appreciate very it. welcome. When, Kevin. when is Brutal Legend uh, officially coming out? Rocktober 13th. Yeah. On the PS3 and the Xbox 360. No. Also, my another? birthday's in October. Rocktober, everybody. Okay. Look forward to it. And you <laughs> know, I know totally, the perfect gift for Miss Webb. Totally off topic. Okay, still ahead. Yes. Talk about me all of a sudden. Anna David Prowl of Los Angeles at night to clean up all the dirty sex questions yeah. you have in sex on the street. Look at her staring at that camera. Then later in the loop, <laughs> we'll discuss the ad deal that Microsoft just consummated with Yahoo. Hey, Google, your move. Ooh, take it on, Google. Plus, you'll enjoy the pain and the pleasure of great moments in de evolution. Everyone skimming themselves from the gene pool is doing it solo <laughs> this week. Stick around. Some studios have like giant lights that say applause and they yeah. flicker them when you're supposed to come in. Uh -huh. Here's what we had just as we we're coming in from break. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, everybody, clap! We have, yeah. we have a dude yelling, hey, everybody, clap! You know what, though? It gets the job done. It totally did. I, I think it's great. You Thank you, Brian. Happened? People clapped. We don't have to change the light bulb. No, we don't. Thank you, Brian. Yes. Hey, everybody, clap for Brian. Yay! All right. You Sorry to make it I'm wasting time. I'm sorry. It is, it's actually time for Blair Herder in the news. You have him here too. Yeah. Thanks, dude. That's me. Hey, Morgan. Hey, by the way, does it, does it kind of feel like 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 we're kind of cheating on Adam right now? Is that? Is that <laughs> you guys are fine. He's not watching. Oh, that's true. We're sorry, dude. Let's start the feed. <laughs> It is Wednesday, July 29th, and here are your top stories. We're still your friend, Adam. Oh, and Microsoft and Yahoo are teaming up to take on Google. The two search giants just announced a 10-year partnership set to begin in 2010. Yahoo will handle the ad sales side of things, while Microsoft will run, power, run and power Yahoo's search engine with, you guessed it, Bing technology. Now, it's a major effort by the two companies to steal some of Google's nearly 70 freaking percent of the search market. And we're gonna have more on this, how this deal will affect you later on in the loop. Uh, Windows 7 Ultimate isn't supposed to be released to the public until October 22nd, but of course, somebody has already cracked and activated it. A hacker posted a leaked Lenovo Windows 7 DVD image on a Chinese forum and voila, suddenly people are running the new $319 OS for free almost two months before the release date. Uh, it goes without saying that this is a major problem for Microsoft, though the tech giant has yet to comment on the leak, but I'm going to speculate right now, somebody's pissed off. Bad news for iPhone users, you're about to get hacked. Two researchers have found a security hole that allows hackers to take complete control of your iPhone with just a few simple text messages. The researchers uh, will present their findings Thursday at the Black Hat Cybersecurity Conference in Las Vegas. Researcher Charlie Miller told Forbes that someone could pretty quickly take over every iPhone in the world with this. Yeah, in the world. In related scary iPhone news, Apple claims that jailbroken iPhones could be used in cyber attacks to crash cell phone towers. Uh, this sudden claim may have something to do with Apple's current fight to make jailbreaking illegal under the DMCA. And finally, massive, massive news from the world of mixed martial arts. Now, for years, the one fight that every fan in the MMA universe wanted to see was overwhelmingly dominant UFC heavyweight champion Brock Lesnar versus the number one ranked heavyweight fighter in the world, of course, Fedor. I don't even need to pronounce your last name because everybody knows you as Fedor. And with the recent collapse of the Affliction Fight Organization, it looked like UFC President Dana White was going to announce that Fedor was signing with the UFC this Friday. However, moments ago, game developer EA announced that Fedor would be headlining the EA MMA video game. And and that news might just throw a wrench into the works. Now, Dana has publicly stated, very vocally, that the UFC has an ongoing deal with THQ's UFC 2009 Undisputed franchise, and no fighter who appears in EA's MMA game will be allowed to fight in the UFC. Now, this is significant because Dana's 
press conference is two days away, and everybody thought that he was going to announce Fedor signing. But Fedor, being attached to the game now, just 48 hours away, gives Dana no time to retract that statement. And Dana's a guy who's always kind of muscled his way into negotiations. So I'd like to think that Fedor was sitting around drinking vodka with all his Russian vodka buddies and said, you know what? We're going to sign with the EA game. Ball's in your court, Dana. Zoskovia! That's the only Russian name I know. Was that, I thought that was a brand of vodka. That's the only thing I know about okay, Russia. Okay, well, good, okay. good. So, <laughs> so it could be a guys, brand of vodka. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I, I'll look forward to Trinidad. Fedor called me and was just like, OMG, and then Dana texted me, he's like, WTF. So <laughs> yeah. the story's definitely blowing up. And it's, it's huge. just, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Blair. Thank you, Blair. Yeah. You're welcome. Now, here's an observation. Anna David is the Walter Cronkite of sex. She's dead? Oh. No, she's the most trusted name in sex advice. <laughs> or she's a zombie, I don't know. <laughs> I'm Anna David, and I'm here in one of the sexiest cities in the world. But you know what I think is even sexier? I'll give you a hint. It's in your pants. <laughs> now there's a lot of people out there who need a little bit of help from the Department of Love. So Attack of the Show sent me to the streets of Los Angeles to give some hands-on advice. When a girl asks you how many people you've had sex with, uh, what's, what do you think is an acceptable answer? Well, okay, I'm not somebody who advocates lying <laughs> regularly. Okay. But I do think this is one of those times where maybe keeping the answer shrouded in mystery might be a good idea. I think that if it's more than, say, 50, Maybe answering the question with, you know, I, you know, I've dated some girls might be better than saying, oh, well, actually, number 51 was Ashley and it happened last night. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I think that it's one of these things that nothing good ever comes from these conversations. We do judge the high numbers. So I say you try to sort of keep it very general, but then, you know, you can't grill her about how many guys she's been with either. I, I, I just try to steer away from those conversations. Good, good. That's, yeah, just sort of keep it very <laughs> change the subject. So my girlfriend is always complaining that her breasts are too small. Now, I tell her that they're perfect, and I mean it. Mm -hmm. But would it be wrong for me to offer to pay for a boob job? Look, I feel like if you've got the money to blow on that kind of thing, who's to stop you? But if you're talking about a girl who really does have perfect breasts and she's sitting there obsessing over how her breasts are too small, this might be a situation that's a little bit more complicated than something like a surgical procedure can solve. You know, there's this sort of body dysmorphia disorder. A lot of girls who have eating disorders, they literally cannot see their bodies as they really are. I mean, does she seem like the kind of girl she's gonna get the surgery and she's just gonna find something new to obsess over or do you think that's gonna be the problem solver? Well, I'm hoping that Maybe what she obsesses over won't be her body, but mine. Nice! That might be money well spent, then. Are there any exercises that I can do to uh, kind of increase my sex life, maybe help it out a little bit? Yes, absolutely there are. That's a good question. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with the Kegel exercise. Have you heard of that? Uh, yeah, I've, I've vaguely heard of it. Okay, most, I think, guys think that it's something that, like, women learn in Lamaze classes when they're about to give birth, mm -hmm. and they do. But it actually can help anybody's sex life. For women, it can absolutely help them be able to um, orgasm in bed with a man. It can control when he releases. So the best way to start practicing that is actually when you're peeing. Sorry to get a little graphic, a little graphic here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't mean to embarrass you. You're not blushing, <laughs> though. That's good. Quite all right. So when you're peeing, you stop the flow. That feeling, that contraction right there, that's your pelvic muscle. That's what you need to exercise. So then later, try contracting, releasing, contracting, releasing. When you start exercising that muscle, we're going to be like a new man in the bedroom. Okay, Mike, because you asked such an excellent question, I have a surprise for you. A copy of my new novel, this just came out from HarperCollins, it's called Bot. It is about a journalist who does a story on high-class prostitution in Hollywood and learns all sorts of lessons. It is for you, from me, for asking such an excellent oh, question. Well, thank you. After your exercises, then you get to read. Okay. Not before. Just doing my bit to help the guys out in LA. I'm Anna David, see you next time I go. In your pants. I have one more bit of sex advice for you. If it's pink in the middle, stick it back in for a while. Whoa. 
That might be a recipe for chicken. <laughs> Kevin? <laughs> Kevin? <clears throat> yes, Microsoft and Yahoo never ended up getting married, but they announced today that they're friends, you know, with benefits. So we'll find out what it means for you and the Goog in the loop. Joining me from San Francisco to help us make sense of it all, staff writer for CNET.com, Tom Krasit is here. How are you, Tom? Good. How are you guys? Doing very well. Uh, you know, we've, we've been following this story all day, watching what the, the pundits are, are weighing in, watching my, uh, Yahoo's stock just slowly dip down and down towards the bottom of our computer monitors. And we know they're, they're okay, so now they're teaming up for a huge search deal, and yet their shareholders and the entire tech community are acting like this is the worst thing ever. Yahoo's dead. They're already planning celebrity memorial services. LA's going to shut down. Um, what, what do you make of all this? Well, I think people are just disappointed at what this has turned out to be. I mean, you've got to remember, this has been going on for like 18 months now. Microsoft offered like $45 billion for the whole company back in February of last year. And now we're getting down to the point where they're just doing this relatively small search deal. Yeah, and so I think a lot of people were disappointed. Tom, you know, what, are, the what are the details of, of that deal, though? Because, yes, I mean, Microsoft offered, uh, you know, buckets of cash, you know, 18 months ago, as you said. Right now, they're, they're giving Yahoo nothing up front. And what are they getting back from them? So, yeah, that was actually a pretty good coup for Microsoft in, not, in being able to avoid the upfront payment. I mean, basically, what Microsoft gets is I'm the very... rights to do searches on all of Yahoo's websites. So, uh, so now Yahoo Search is powered by Microsoft. Powered by Bing. Powered actually, by Bing. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, powered by Bing, which is, and don't call it a search engine. No, it's a, a magic maker, a mystical machine, or whatever the hell they're trying to push One it as. One of those but, things, yeah. yeah. But people think of Yahoo, I think, still as a search engine, even though for ages it was actually powered by Google. But with this deal, they're essentially getting out of the search business, right? They're just, they're just pushing ads for search now. That's right. I mean, they're no longer going to be developing search technology. That's all Microsoft. They are going to be selling ads on both their search results We're and Bing. So that keeps them in the game a little bit. But yeah, this is a, definitely the end of an era for Yahoo. And, and yes, they're going to sell ads, but they don't get 100% of this ad revenue, right? It's going, to be, it's going to be split between Microsoft and Yahoo. That's correct. They get 88%, which is obviously less than 100%. But the benefit is that you don't have to spend all the money to maintain a search engine. Hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, in servers and people and, you know, research and development and all right. that stuff. So that's why they that's made true. the deal. Especially when people are only using your search engine to find Google, which is always good. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, uh, as you said, Microsoft initially offered Yahoo over $44 billion when they tried to acquire them uh, last year. Now there's no uh, money up front. Um, was this the best offer that Yahoo could get at this point? Or, because some people are saying that they should have held out, they should have gone another route, maybe acquired smaller search engine technologies. Uh, was this a smart move? I don't think they had much of a choice. You know, if they had made the decision that they weren't going to be committed to search, this was the best they were going to do. I mean, that $44 billion is gone. That's not coming back. Right. And now, so if they wanted to get out of the search business, this was the way to do it. Well, yeah, and they're certainly out now. But now that they're out of the search business, how do you differentiate a Yahoo from like an AOL, like what, what's the different service? What is Yahoo's new image going to be moving forward? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they try to do. I mean, you know, there's a huge site. You know, they, they've got a reach, you know, as one of the top five you know, web properties in the world. So they've got a lot of people, you know, still using their mail and, mm -hmm. and checking their stocks and doing their fantasy baseball teams and all that. And if they can sell ads against that, then they can have themselves a nice little profitable business. That's true. Now, how does this actually affect Google, though? Well, for now, it, it won't do much for Google at all. I mean, this deal is going to take forever to complete months, if not years. So Google can sort of sit back and see how things go and, and you know, make their move at that time. I mean, you know, it's going to affect them at some point because you've got a more, uh, strong, a stronger competitor in, in, you know, that has about, you know, 25, 30 percent of the market. So you got to, you know, that'll give advertisers something else to think about. But, you know, you're still Google. You're still churning out good search products. So you, you're not too scared just yet. Tom, real quick, do you Yahoo? Uh, rarely. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just making sure. I think that's, that's, the, that's the ultimate question and answer for this one. Thank you, Tom, for joining us. Really appreciate you keeping us in the loop on this one. Thanks a bunch. You're welcome. Take it easy. All right, let's go on over to Miss Morgan Webb. All right, stay tuned. Today's Break Moments in De-Evolution features self-inflicted pain. Dear Lord, why do they do the horrible things that they do? The feed is brought to you by Gillette Fusion, Gillette's closest, most comfortable shave. Here's a question for you. 
Would you put a toothpick under your big toenail and kick a wall for an evening with Scarlett Johansson? Well, you logged on to G4TV.com and told us what you thought, and we'll have the results after the break. The results are in, and a whopping 78% of you said that you would not kick a wall with a toothpick under your big toenail for an evening with Scarlett Joe. Wow. Really? You guys wouldn't even kick a wall with a toothpick? I mean, I, I guess you're right. Log on to the all-new G4TV.com for more questions like this and tell us just how far you'd go. Every toothpick. Wow. Okay, it is time for the Encyclopedia of Hurt we call Break Moments in De-Evolution. Yes, this week's honorees, uh, they actually prove that they don't need anyone's help to maul themselves. No, they don't. Yahtzee to break. No, no, enough. Well done. Perfect timing, well thank done. you. Can I get a wet wipe? No? Okay. No. Starting things off this week, we've got a dude who must have been really, really, really bored. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the self inflicted face plant. Don't, no, 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 I know, I know, I know you're new to this segment, but don't try to explain it, don't think about it, don't try to get into his shoes. There was no apparent alcohol involved, which I don't get that, how that works. It's not particularly creative. Uh, it's a dude on the internet with a folding chair. He had to have practiced to make sure that the distance Yeah, he had to get right. the trajectory right. It was a little incredible machine-ish, had to like position the stuff. Um, well, this week's rating system is socks and sandals, which is, of course, the quintessential chick magnet. Hello. You should know, because he kind of... I rocked it all throughout elementary school. Did anyone... And junior high school and high school, not going to lie. Did anyone ever mention to you at all? Nobody no? did, until okay. I stopped wearing them. No one told me about my mustache, either, until I was, like, 24. Yeah, maybe I should have mentioned yeah, that one. Yeah, thanks okay. for that one. But how many socks and sandals do you want to give this guy? You didn't seem, like, to be a big fan here. I think I'm going to give it a one out of five, for all the reasons I mentioned. Okay. Not super creative. That's valid. All right. All right. Well, the next guy prompts the question, just why? Just why? why? Yeah. Just why? Why? Just watch. Just why? Work. You'll see. Just uh. yeah. Oh. I love you too. I'm realizing these videos all kind of bring up the same question. That's what I'm saying. You can't, you can't get mired down in that. But what we cut out was like his, his prep routine getting ready for this incredible stunt where right. he pounds his 40 like it's Popeye going for a spinach. Alcohol involved. Uh, I understand yeah, that a so little bit. Yeah, so that more. explains it right, a little alcohol bit. Alcohol fueled, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was, a little, it was a little low payoff. He had a whole bed of tacks there, and I think it only took one or two to actually stick it to his forehead. So I that mean, was a little eh. I've seen The Wrestler, and I've seen some real carnage, <laughs> and yes. I'm no longer impressed by that, my friend. All right, how many pairs of socks and sandals are we giving this guy? Um, he needed his friend to jam the thumbtacks into his forehead, right. which he clearly could have done himself. I know. But it was bloodier, unlike the folding chair, so I'm going to give it two. Right. I'm going to give it two, two right. very stylish, very stylish socks and sandals. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Finally, uh, this poor guy doesn't necessarily inflict pain upon himself. Yeah, that is true. But he was asking for yes, it. Yes, he was. Right? Yeah, go for it. Nope. Oh! Oh! Oh my God! Oh, that's broke. Oh my God, dude, are you okay? Yeah, you see? my wrist is. Oh! Racing for the flag, and That's then boom! That's why I loved it, because it was a purpose. There was a point. Yeah. He had obviously had a great inspiration yeah. that was Super Mario Brothers. And now he can set the timer on his watch with only using one hand. Yeah, see how convenient that is. Mm. Yeah. How many does this guy deserve? How many socks and sandals? I think, um, I think this guy deserves a five out of five. Whoa! <laughs> that is it! I know. It took bone almost poking out of skin for you to award the five out of five. I am a woman with high standards. Well, that's, that's why we appreciate you on the break moments, Miss Webb. I, sadly, lots of faces were harmed during the making of those clips. And that's where socialized medicine will come in handy one yes, day. Yes, this August, four of the world's best 
Online poker players will head to Vegas to try to win $2 million oh, in two months yeah. in G4's new original series. It's called Two Months, Two, two months. Million. Two million. The show kicks off August 16th. If you guys want exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and footage of I know Kevin wants Visiting that. the set. Check out the all-new 2M2MM.com for more info. Still ahead, the 80s live and die quickly. Yeah, breakdancing makes the world's shortest comeback in today's <laughs> epic fail. Stick around, everybody. This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by Freestyle Releasing's The Collector. In theaters, July 31st. <laughs> is a lesson for all to leave certain activities to professionals. Yes, like fireworks yes. or race car driving. Yes. Even another good one. Even break dancing. Mm -hmm. Good one. Oh! 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 <laughs> the reason I like this video is because you feel like there's a good reason for it to be, you know, to be taped. Yeah, yeah, I get it. So I'm going to break dance feel... in a very confined space with a metal pole in the room. Yeah, He's not that's necessarily an intelligent guy for that reason. I'm <laughs> just know, saying it seems like, unlike the weightlifting guy in the beginning of the show, it seems like, you know. So that struck me as like his dad was taping that, then cut the sleeves off, brought it to the weight equipment in the other room and started working yeah. out. Like that's a whole family of fail. <laughs> that's, that's all that's going on in that video. But, but he thinks he's awesome. On the plus side, at least something exciting has finally happened in that guy's full length sex mirror. Yes, and, and he only hurt himself oh, in that act, God. so good. <laughs> We're back so fast. Go to the all new. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what I was expecting to happen. Like, <laughs> for I'm gonna hate. Slash ARTS for uh, all of the that? things you saw today <laughs> and more. Hey, huge <laughs> thanks to Miss Morgan Webb for rocking the attack of the show. Yay! Also, a huge thanks to Tom Kreiser for being here. You gotta go because X plays up next. Good night, everybody. Yay! I love you, Nova Scotia. <laughs> Seriously, stop twittering me. I love Nova Scotia.